When we think of rotaries, we commonly think of the Wankel or the massive Dorito utilized in the RX-8. But the first true rotary engine was actually utilized in World War I, with an odd number of pistons around a central axis. But these engines were very strange, with the cylinders rotating around a stationary crankshaft. Even though the variant was utilized in aircraft, it was very short-lived and it literally covered the pilot in oil after the flight. A couple decades later, and the Wankel rotary engine followed suit. And this one was a drastic change to its predecessor. Instead of rotating everything around, this one utilized a simple rotor with a central output shaft. The shape of the rotor and housing creates voids that expand and contract depending on where the rotor is during its cycle. And similar to the auto cycle, each chamber has a designated intake, compression, ignition, and exhaust stage. Luckily, there are no valves, and as the explosion expands, it forces the rotor to rotate and create power which drives the engine. All of the three phases operate simultaneously, and in theory, this would offer higher power to weight ratios when compared to the conventional auto. It also has a lower moment of inertia, and can handle very high RPMs without stress-related contours on the crankshaft. The Wankel engine has excellent attributes. It's very simple, balanced, and can run on multiple fuels. Even this little 2cc Toyon motor can rev up to 20,000 RPM in this compact design that's pretty impressive. And one may ask, well, why didn't this displace the piston engine? Well, there are a couple of good reasons for that. When the Wankel first came out in the 1950s, it had problems associated with the apex seals, poor shaft lubrication, and fuel economy. The combustion chamber just didn't have the compression efficiency leading to unburnt fuel. It wasn't really considered a huge problem because many engines have to go through refined variants to reach better efficiency. And many companies were drawn towards the simplicity of the Wankel. General Motor, Ford, Yamaha, and Suzuki all poured millions into researching the Wankel. Even John Deere invested over 300 million into their massive military prototype. The research peaked around the 70s and all these projects abruptly ended. However, Mazda continued to produce the Wankel even claiming to have solved the inevitable apex seal problem. Their latter RX-8 relocated the ports to the sides allowing for better airflow, and this amounted to a 2.6 liter engine producing 238 horsepower. However, the rotary was eventually succumbed to emission problems, and by 2012, there were very strict emission standards across the globe. Like stated before, this doesn't take away the benefits of a rotary because it can be compact and very balanced. So Mazda is changing their approach a little bit, and they will utilize a smaller rotary variant as a range extender in a hybrid vehicle. It's still really early to say whether or not that's going to be successful because this is really dependent on emerging technologies such as hydrogen and the energy densities of batteries. But an alternative solution to all this right now is to change the Wankel design itself. The company Liquid Piston has done this by turning the rotor into a peanut shape and the housing to a triloped, basically turning the Wankel inside out. There are only two moving parts with no poppet valves, thus reducing noise. The combustion chamber is stationary with direct fuel injection, so it has a higher compression ratio of 18 to 1, which is almost double that of previous Wankels. Another notable feature is that the apex seals are stationary. They're not bouncing around inside the rotor, and they're directly lubricated from the housing. The latest variant, which has made headlines, is the XTS-210, and it can run on a variety of fuels including diesel or kerosene. It only weighs 42 pounds and can output 25 horsepower at 46 pounds of torque. When compared to a conventional piston diesel like the KDW, the 210 is quite a bit smaller with similar torque and horsepower. We also have to keep in mind that this is really hinged on compression ratio and that will have an impact on the fuel efficiency of the 210. The engine is not yet commercialized, however the company has acquired millions in military contracts and has produced real working prototypes in the past. It also has many potential applications as well, including UAVs, smaller generators, or even lawn equipment. Just like Mazda, the engine could also be used in hybrid vehicles as well. The company is intending to produce a variant with around 1.2 horsepower per pound. However, this is all going to come down to one thing, and that is economies of scale. Mazda has shown time and time again that they are willing to commercialize their rotary variant. However, Liquid Piston is quite a bit of a smaller company and they're very reliant on financing. So the 210 is going to have to speak for itself and break new numbers. 
More importantly, I'd like to know what your opinion is on the XTS-210 and the development of the rotary. So please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.